Hi, thanks, thanks a lot uh, for the warm welcome. Uh, I hope that I think that uh, you can all hear me good. Um, I was seeing the last presentations, they were on the last days, uh, the two days in November and now, and they were amazing. I hope that I can, I can meet the expectations as well of uh, closing this amazing event. Being in this event for a second time is such a great experience. So uh, you will see something very interesting about my presentation. Um, I, I'm the ones that tend to go over this uh, tech present tech presentations and resources to know how to better, how to improve the attention on the slides. And something that I, I was always uh, I, I always find uh, very interesting is that we we tend to um, just concentrate in a limited number of elements, and that's why you will see actually that that's my focus. I hope that you that you focus on what I said. My presentation has no more than. 10 elements, 12 elements per slide. So you will see just a few things. Uh, it's meant to be like this. I, I went to a process of reducing all my content to try to focus on the value that they're meant to deliver and what I'm going to speak today. I hope that is interesting for all of you. So with that being said, we will start. So I actually, I already got presented, but I thought it would be nice anyways to say who I am. Uh, my name is Viviana Ortiz. I'm head of data for Partial Lab. I was head of data for Decathlon Germany. I have led uh, many automation projects and also uh, operations project in the retail, in the e-commerce specifically, as well as in um, complex operations so as, as oil production and so on. Um, I think that at this moment, at this point, there's no need for more. So I will jump into the content. The idea, so when, when you see the main goal of my, of my presentation, right, is to discover the value behind this, this solution. Actually, the, the, the main topic of my presentation is how you can solve complex business problems with super simple, not simple, but let's say super, um, effective solutions. And that actually are, at, at the first sight, you would say, oh, but this is, this is not complex. This is actually easy. Everybody can do it. But, many retailers fail on doing this and actually um, we found we have found a lot of value along the way so when we talk about uh, retail right because that's my business i come from e-commerce operations i come from from retail so this is this is what i've been doing for for many years already so what is the main goal the main goal is to guarantee a seamless journey for the end customer meaning we want to guarantee to provide the best experience Possible. We want to provide for the end customer the best experience. Why? For many reasons, right? For because that increases loyalty, because that increases retention, because that makes that the customer comes back, because that produces that at the end is a profitable business. So it's simple like this. This is why you can see it means profit for the retailer, for the economy, and obviously satisfaction all the way for the end customer. So we look for the best experience. The best experience includes everything, right? The satisfaction with the product, the satisfaction with the service, with the transport, with the packaging, and so on. And we, we can realize actually that retailers are super customer centric. They are extreme, extremely customer centric all the way from the first contact, the first session, the first moment that actually uh, the, the end customer visits their website. From that first visit, everything turns, everything plays around that end customer. And funny as it is, actually, this is this customer obsession, which is obviously the best thing for a retailer, happens until the moment that the retailer delivers to the carrier the parcel, until the moment that the parcel is shipped. Then suddenly, all this very close relationship between the retailer and their end customer just breaks. Suddenly, from one moment to the other. Why, why actually this happen? But as, as it's very, very, many, many of you would say, no, that actually doesn't happen because the carrier contact the, the end customer and so on. It's, it's super interesting that um, the retailer, around 80, if I'm not wrong, around 80% of the retailers in, um, in, 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 the, in the UK and around 60% of retailers in the US lost, lose their contact with the end customer from the moment that the parcel is uh, is um, being shipped. For that moment and on, the contact is lost. Until, of, of course, the end customer either calls uh, asking for their parcel or either make a claim because of any specific issue, right? 
So it's like this. It's a fact. The statistics are there, and this is the main issue. So being said that, um, what, what does it mean to, to a business? I, I wanted to focus this because obviously the main, the main goal of, of, of all this is how these technology solutions uh, can solve problems on the business side and generate profit and generate a win and, uh, and a long-term benefit for the organizations and for the users, right? Um, what is the effect of, of this break? In the contact of breaking this journey, this this seamless journey that suddenly at one point just stops. Um, around thirty to eighty percent of the customers uh, uh, of the customer service uh, inquiries are related to reasonable calls. That means that it depends on the market. Of course, it goes from from thirty to eighty percent, and depends also on the peak on the on the, on the season where we are. But it can go until eighty percent of the time that the customer service units dedicate to solve those problems are normally, where is my order calls? People who are calling just because they do not wear the way is their order. Around 2.5 to $6 dollars cost every call, every of these 30 to 80% of calls that are reaching out to the customer service cost that to the retailer. After this, uh, the parcel is shipped and this contact is broken, after that moment, there is zero touching points in the journey and zero additional traffic, of course, and of course, zero uh, conversions related to that original contact, right? Then what, what is this transformation? What, what do we do as Parcel Lab? We have pictured already the problem, the business situation, the problem, and right now, what does the offer resolution? What are the benefits, the huge benefits that actually tackling these issues can mean for the retailer? So first, 25% of reduction in Wisma calls. So this is uh, some of these are from um, taken from from many of our customers. Some of these are average from different markets, but around 25% of reduction in where is my order calls, given the the cost per call and the amount of calls depending on the amount of the e-commerce activity. This is a huge saving and a huge win uh, for the for the retailer. 80% of the customers, around 80% of the customers, return to their web shop. That through these new touching points that we create along the communication, because we don't break the journey, we can have around 80% of customers coming back, interested by many reasons that we will talk about later on. 70%, around 70% of more positive feedbacks in the communications, so that they provide also feedback they are happy that they are uh, that they feel satisfied with the service and the proactive communication that they receive related to their order. Around four new touch points per customer. That depends on the industry. It can go for from two to four, depending on the industry. But if four new touch points and new opportunities of contact, and this, if uh, if any of the ones that are hearing me and uh, develop maybe technology for retail or in the retail business, you know that every touch point is like gold. So every possible contact with the customer to engage, to generate conversions, to generate loyalty as gold. And of course, 10% of around 10% of increase in the basket size. So people tend to increase the uh, size of the order when they know that actually uh, they are going to have the support along the journey. So, and then this is this is what what it's behind as a result, right? And now what, what do we do? What is the technical solution behind it? So let's start from a very general uh, conception of it. What is Partial Lab? What is what do we do uh, as post purchase? Partial Lab is a post purchase uh, platform. So we take care that this uh, journey, the breaks, actually we continue and we try to give the support and um, make the brands and the people closer during this part of the journey that actually has been proven to be the most sensible one. So managing all this data, because the job, basically our job is super focused on data, a lot of data and the supply chain complexity to manage over them. Um, we deliver four things. So the post purchase communications, the order status, data intelligence over that, meaning um, a lot of data and analytics products developed on the base of that data that we collect, we will see in the, in the following slides, and support on the returns, 
through a, a very uh, expanded returns portal and uh, guarantee management system, um, which tends to help a lot for uh, for the retailers to manage their returns, which maybe you know in upper end can go up to 25-26% of the orders, right? So, and that, that, that was like the concept of the business, right? That is what the product itself it is. But how does it work? What is the process of that working in, the, in a more technical and specific way of this digital product that can help the retail to save money, to improve the service, to create loyalty, to retain customers? So basically, our business is a lot of, you, you can see the different process. So the onboarding, which is mainly data integration. When we talk about onboarding of the customers, we talk about the integration of their data, the integration of the data and the integration of the data from, uh, from the carriers. That's why we, and we integrate this complexity and we try to manage to simplify it into our own data model to try to trigger many of the things that we spoke. For example, the status, either if it's a page, in a communication, an SMS, a mail, a chat, whatever that is required from the retailer side for us to trigger um, that uh, proactive communication related to the purchase. And by the end, of course, the returns portal, which is a complete platform to manage all the returns, including label printing, uh, return status, and so on for the customer, return re registration, of course. I have focused um, most of the presentation or, or from here, the, the rest of the slides, I have focused on the, um, the simplicity, the magic, what, what I call the magic. There's, I would, I would love to have more time so that we can go in each of the topics more deeply, but I have tried to concentrate each of them in, um, the simplicity related to that part of the technical solution that actually makes us so valuable. And that's why we start with the first, the first magic secret, let's say. And this is, this is applicable for any other solution, any digital product, or when you develop a digital product, for me, it is, it comes to, um, how to tackle the solution to the problem, right? And in this case, I have tried to put in what are the secrets that make this solution so profitable for retail. So first is extreme easy and flexible retail data integration and status retrieval. So, when, when you offer a service, when you are a software as a service company, when you develop a software to be offered to someone who at the same time has their own, um, their own customers and provides their own goods or services, it's important that, uh, this is so simple as possible that it allows to concentrate them on their core business. That's one of the secrets. And for that, the technical side has to also adapt to that setup. Um, in our case, it comes to super easy ways of integration that can go to so easy as a couple hours or a couple of days. Um, we are able to collect data from via API, uh, file base, meaning the transfer of, of a file, of, of, of a file or XML or a CSV file uh, via email, uh, which is as, as funny as it sounds, because many, I saw obviously um, there have been super interesting topics when we talk about industry 4.0, 5.0, or we talk about digital twins, or uh, we talk about um, about a virtual reality, augmented reality. There's a lot of stuff for data and AI, which is my business. Uh, when we talk about that, the, the solutions are normally very complex and takes a lot of research and development on the way. And this, when I, when we speak and we said, okay, our solution integrate data sometimes when it's needed per email. And as, as, as funny as it could sound is because simply not necessarily the most complex is the solution for your problem. The idea is to allow them to speed up, to ramp up as fast as possible so that they can start engaging the customers and just transferring the data. Obviously, ideally is per API, but in that case, we try to offer all types of possibilities so that the data is available as fast as possible. Thus, I have just put one of a payload example of, of, of the, of the object. How does it look like? So it's as simple as the main data of the, of the order tracking, of the, the tracking that we are speaking in that case. Um, and obviously we are able to provide, to retrieve that data through different methods, either webhooks, uh, 
also through integrations, the more complex integration we are able to retrieve, also to diverse chatbots, for example, it's important that we provide this data for the further communication of the uh, retailer. And then the next secret for me is enhancing the interaction with the customer through personalization and intelligent components. Branding is important. Personalization, uh, without personalization these days, retail is not possible, not successfully at least. So even if we provide a digital service for a retail, it's, it's not our name at the end, it's their brand, but it's also the possibility to add other components. That means that we create um, diverse models or features that they are able to integrate to their own solution, to the communication, to make it unique. Um, obviously, the, the amount and the, diversi the, the diversity of communication that can be triggered depends on the purpose and the public that they are looking to achieve. Right? Uh, in this case, um, we can also uh, add, for example, uh, verified attachments or, uh, or connect directly to the recommendation engine. In these days, there is a lot of uh, amazing services being provided by third parties related to recommendation um, and amazing and many companies have even their own recommendation engine, which is which is quite uh, quite the standard in the market. And the possibility of creating this uh, direct communication, direct engaging point with a customer that feels that this this um, this approach is personalized and is an attention direct to their uh, to their needs. Then, um, the, the next one for me would be the increased engagement, uh, increasing engagement uh, with the brand through a zero effort order status page. Um, this, this, the post purchase is, uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I think that, yeah. Okay, uh, I think that everything is good, yes. Perfect. So um, here, I, not only the communications or the triggering of communication and of the data based on the data that has been integrated is required, but also the um, the provision of data that is possible to, for them to be presented in the way that the company best um, requires, plus creating traffic to their own sites. This is, um, I would say, this if if. If any, if any digital providers are able to, to achieve that, to generate also traffic to their own site effectively and safely, then it's, it's a win. In this case, uh, for example, it's, it's as simple as it just the retail creates a landing page, they copy the snippet uh, in, in, in the body of the, of, the, of, the, of the page and they are ready to go. Obviously, there are other functionalities that they can integrate there. Um, depending on, on add-ons that they, that they would like to have. But this is, is as simple as that. And again, simplicity wins against any other complex solution. And this is used by huge brands, huge brands in sports, retail, in, in, in apparel, in um, home and furniture. Uh, you would be amazed. And this is uh, such a simple, but such as helpful and such as powerful. Then, uh, solve the complexity of post-purchase management with carrier integration. Everybody who is in, in this business, everybody who is related to retail or giving te either techno technolo technology support or uh, giving any type of uh, support on the, on the data side as well for the retail knows that one of the, most, the biggest problems in the operations of e-commerce is carrier integration. It's how to handle the data of different uh, delivery, prov delivery providers. This is uh, this sounds um, easy, but the reality is that the data is extremely rich and complex because of different carrier service levels, uh, agreements, countries, regions, uh, uh, regulations, borders, uh, and and so on. So all this complexity, um, all this complexity requires that all the digital solutions also prepare for that. One of the strongest, I think the strongest, uh, the strongest um, part of our solution is this effective carrier integration, the integration of that data. Uh, we can obviously 
partial lab in case of our solution, we can integrate with the data that is publicly available. This is a public uh, interface, and then uh, we query directly the data through them, or it's a private integration, which means that we access to them and then um, the retailer requires for the access and all the credentials for us to be able to uh, to access to the data in a, in a private interface. This this obviously provides a much more, a super rich uh, amount of data that can go from the, not only from the status or the checkpoint that has been achieved at the moment by the carrier, uh, but also the route plan, for example, or the geolocation. Um, so exactly coordinates of the location of the of the delivery truck. These are just a few examples of how uh, this actually this partnership it works uh, amazingly to try to satisfy the needs of handling the complexity. We supported more than 150 carriers so that are already integrated. I mean that we have either through public or private uh, interfaces that we integrate, we can already um, consume their data. But also, uh, obviously, there's always new carriers. There's like carriers in, in every country, with many carriers that are just local, and this requires uh, a process of integration. Again, a simplicity is the, the, the goal of our business. Simplicity is the way that we handle everything, um, either if it's through an API or just to uh, transfer a file. Doesn't matter. Uh, the goal, obviously, is to have the data available and um, for for the for the transformation and the standardization so that we can trigger communications and status updates. One of the last ones, uh, transforming reporting into powerful BI. So many digital solutions for retail, they provide a lot of data visualization. Data visualization regarding the tracking, the status, we tried, obviously, not only to enrich with new data integration, that's one thing, but also try to find deeper patterns through advanced analytics to try to deliver more business intelligence insights, more really insights that allows to take decisions from the business side. And this is something that uh, we tend to see not that often at, 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 uh, at maybe at, uh, at funny as it sounds, but um, there's many visualizations, but not necessarily thought about what decisions can be made by the different stakeholders. Even if it's logistics, if it's customer service, if it's um, if it's uh, data and analytics teams on the retailer side, if it's the marketing area. So this is um, depends a lot on the stakeholder, the, the storytelling that we have there, and as well the decisions that are going to be made. Um, we have run in our for our new that's going to be this is kind of a sneak peek because actually um, this view in the in the left side is the new uh, the new analytics module from Partial Lab, uh, which has been taking months and months of strong, strong work. Um, uh, it's around 2,250 queries differently. Uh, we have run a lot of new metrics. We have new metrics, new metrics, new dimensions, um, as well as new interpretation and comparison between, between different um, timelines. That's, uh, that's quite interesting. And the idea always uh, is to challenge this from the business based on what decisions can be uh, executed uh, on, on the base of that. And uh, this, I, I think that this would be the key of that. Um, we use obviously state of the art stack as everybody else for the, for the analytics. And we try to make it as well simple to embed the version of the analytics into, into any other, uh, website. In our cases, our own portal, but some reports, some analytics can also be embedded ad hoc, ad hoc in the customer side. <coughs> So, and the last one is, is uh, maybe the one that is, uh, that is more uh, close to my heart because of my business. Um, using AI to manage and exceed expectations. As we spoke before, it's not always using AI because it's the password of the moment because everybody's doing AI, specifically everybody's doing ML, machine learning, and everybody wants to use it to solve all types of problems. Not that doesn't mean that actually machine learning or any type of AI is the best solution for all 
problems, especially in business. Um, as we saw before, we have seen a lot of a lot of um, issues or business requirements that we can tackle from an analytics perspective. Either if it's data visualization, even if it's extractions, even if it's uh, export and simple queries, uh, or just delivering raw data through the platform that they required ERP uh, uh, customer management, uh, uh, customer data platform of, of the retailer or many other own own technology or own infrastructure, right? From from the our customer side. Um, so it's not necessary that AI is the solution to everything, but there are problems, there are business problems that can be really good. Um, that can be a very good good use case for AI. Um, one of the one of the this, these situations is the predictions for date, the date prediction. Um, if if you are in the business of data, you know that um, there's what, many many type of algorithms and models that we can use for for date prediction depending on the type of data that we have. Um, uh, date prediction in, in for for past purchase is key, right? Because it's about when your parcel is going to come as accurate as possible, as reliable as possible, and uh, and as, as soon as possible. Um, so that's a very good, good use case. Well, that's why I have brought here in the images, actually the example of it, the, the prediction of the delivery date. This is one of our features, one of our products. Uh, we create based on machine learning. We train our models in, um, in uh, millions of, of different trackings, crossed and clustered over, in, uh, over industries and, and, and different businesses. Um, we can adjust attributes. We have obviously defined or standard features, but uh, we have all additional features that can be tuned according to the, to the needs of the retailer. Uh, for us, we try to support the way that we deliver the output of the prediction, try to support through different systems and try to um, put it available when the customer, for example, in the pre-checkout, uh, simply in their, in their, in their website uh, for the checkout of the order. This is again a critical example of, of um, simplicity. The is, is a, is a AI at the end of the day is, is a state of the art. Uh, it's, it's super complex from the the amount of work that it requires the, from the moment that you do an EDA to the moment that you optimize the model um, and all in the middle. But uh, that doesn't mean that the solution itself it has to be uh, complicated. Um, this is uh, this is one of the things um, 